Hey guys, it's Drew here from ScrappyHappiness.com. Today I have a from start to finish video. I have seriously not done one of these in so long and I'm so excited to do one. So this video is actually a pretty crazy start to finish video because you'll see how quickly I change my mind when I do my projects and um, you'll see in this video. So I'm starting off with this piece of Studio Calico paper and I think it's from the Take, take Note collection I believe and it is um, this sort of like cityscape. It's sort of a doodled cityscape on this mint colored paper and um, I'm actually using gesso right now is what you're seeing me use which is like a white paint basically it's sort of like a primer and I'm gonna I'm gonna go over the whole thingy because I didn't want it to be super duper um I didn't want it to be super cityscapey but I still wanted a little bit of that city texture through it because I really liked the doodle effect if that makes sense so I went over it with some um gesso just to sort of tone down it and make it more of a background if that makes sense. So I'm able to add more interesting, more bold pieces on top of it so it doesn't really clash with the background. And I sprayed a bit of water on and smoothed it out just to make sure I was had it all perfectly on there. And now I'm using my heat tool to just heat it up. And when I use my heat tool on a paper like this, what I do is I will heat the front of it and I will actually flip it over and heat the back as well because that's what warps it. If you don't heat the back, it's not if you heat the front and back, it's not going to warp as much as if you just heat one side until it's completely dry. If you flip it over and you heat it the opposite side, it will dry it quicker and it won't warp as much. So just a little tip there in case you did not know about that. I love that back side, the little uh, like paper cut people that you see right there on the yellow. And it's still sort of warped, but as I work with it, you'll see it's just going to go down a little bit. And I could not find my paper trimmer anywhere, so I just used my scissors to cut off that little branding strip at the bottom. These are the photos I'm using. They're pictures of my dog. I just took them on, I put them on Instagram. And I'll put my Instagram name on the screen right now for you guys in case you want to follow me. I post tons of stuff on Instagram. I post at least twice a day. So it's a great way to follow me. Um, and I'll post it on the screen so you guys can check it out. I have a couple pieces of paper here. The pattern papers are that you see here are from the Fifth and Frolic collection by Dear Lizzie. Just uh, the 12 by 12 pad. And I, I swear, like, I'm, I'm seriously not going to keep any of this. I'm going to redo the whole thingy. But I want to show you guys the process of how I work. If you want to skip ahead, you totally can. But um, I would suggest watching it just so you guys can see how I change my mind and how I just sort of um, work through these projects. So I actually ripped the uh, cardboard piece off of that sticker sheet because I loved the watercolor uh, packaging that it had. And I really like the way it looked, so I ripped it off of the sticker sheet because I want to be able to use as much of my product as possible, so why not use the packaging as well? Just sort of adding layers here with some of the papers, the products, um, uh, stickers from that product book that I ripped the page off of, and um, some vintage book paper, which you see sort of on the right side of the screen over there. And then I decided I want to use this mask, and this mask is from Prima, it's a wood grain mask, and I use a little bit of Espresso ink from uh, Adirondack, the color wash. And, like, it looks cool, you guys, I'm not going to hate on it, but I really, I just, I just don't like it very much. Like, I, I feel like if I was doing something else or I had a different project planned out, it would look good, but I have a vision in my head of what I sort of wanted. I sort of wanted a shabby chic layout, which I don't really like shabby chic, but I just wanted to go out of my comfort zone and do something pink and blue and just sort of like soft tones. Since we're coming up to spring, I thought I'd do a soft tone. And I like to wrinkle my papers up a lot to add a little bit of dimension. So as you can see, I'm still trying to work with it, and I grab these 3D foam squares, and I'm just going to pop up my photo on this packaging and isn't that packaging cool it's like watercolored and that's from the dear lizzie um what collection is that it's not the fifth and frolic it's the one before that and then i have a little bit of this twine here and that is from the twinery it's a black one and i just use a couple scraps of washi tape like the washi tape that i have a lot of that i don't think i'm going to use most of i just use it to tape things down because it's super simple and quick and extremely cheap because washi tape is majorly cheap so might as well use it up and i'm still you guys i'm still not even going to keep any of this it's pretty crazy you'll see so i grabbed this piece of paper and this is from i believe october afternoon i love that paper it's like a striped paper that you see there and it's going to start adhering a couple of the pieces down and I think now is when it all changes really I you'll see in a second un momento please 
so excited to be doing another video, finally. Okay, so, I actually grabbed a piece of Maya Road rosette trim, and this is a discontinued trim, sadly, so there is no more of it, but I used three of the rosettes. I wanted a little bit of texture, and I cut a couple strips of the, um, that striped paper that I showed you from October afternoon, but I decided actually not to use it uh, up there. I was going to use it as sort of a random little element, but I didn't use it, and I even ruffled this little piece here. I don't know why I did, but I just decided I wanted to, so... I stuck it over there, which I'm not going to use that either, you'll see. And actually, you guys, when I was stamping this, the camera completely fell. Like, I was totally hardcore pressing this, and when I stamped it on the paper, the camera knocked over, so I, I picked it back up at this point, but um, it did fall over. And I just stamped that heart stamp, and that's a Donna Downey foam stamp that's from Prima Marketing, and I stamped it in some Blackbird color box ink and cut it out, and I actually stamped it on some Dear Lizzie Fifth and Frolic paper. It's the yellow, one of the brighter yellow sheets, and it's just, I, I feel it's too bold. Like, it's just a little bit too bold for the page that I'm going for, that heart. It's a little bit, I don't know, it, it adds too much contrast, I feel, and I don't really want that much contrast. I want things to sort of flow evenly, and I feel like that's just uh, a little bit too contrasty with the page. So at this point, I'm still thinking what I'm going to do, and I grab this large piece of fabric. This is from Moda Fabrics, and I flip it over, and I decide I'm just going to start all over. So I basically start all over again, and I just I use the reverse side of the fabric, so I get this light pattern. I love the wrinkles in it. I love the texture it has. I just really love this new start of a page. So basically, you guys, I just restarted my page, but trust me, it gets a lot better. And I adhered that fabric piece down, added those little strips I cut prior, the little uh, striped strips that I was going to use before, and I put them behind the fabric swatches, and I actually flipped the heart over so it has this cream color on um, one side. It has a typewriter, and remember this, written upside down on that left side of the heart. I didn't like that, so you'll see what I'm going to do. And just a couple more little strips of paper. I want to add little pops of color here and there just so it's not super bold in one particular spot. I want it to flow evenly across the page. And what I'm actually going to be doing is I'm stapling a couple of the elements down just so I have sort of a base to work off of. And I'm just, again, moving around my twine, adding a little bit of glue here and there, just whatever I have... Um, Whatever is on the page, I'm just sort of playing with it. And as you can see, I'm taking my gesso again, which is what I used to paint the page in the very beginning, and I'm going to paint this heart. And I'm just sort of whitewashing it. I don't want that ty typewriter or the random remember this upside down text in, that, in the heart. So I decided that I'm going to paint it. Super simple way, and it, it adds that little bit of a shabby chic effect to it, your page. And I really like the way that that looks a lot better than the yellow and a lot better than the typewriter, which didn't even look like a typewriter because like 70% of it was cut off anyways. And I used a little bit of that Espresso Mist to drop on my page. And since this is fabric, it actually absorbs quite a bit. So the drops become huge. I didn't really think about that. But, you know, I sort of actually liked the thick drops after I looked at it. Who knows what I'm doing right now, but we'll see in a minute. So I grab my little trim that I used before, the Maya Road trim, and I'm just going to play around a little bit more with uh, layers and what I'm going to do. And I think I'm actually going to stick this down at the moment. So I decide to go ahead and glue it down. Glue it down a couple of my elements in different positions. And then I grab this little uh, piece from Heidi Swap. It's one of the definition terms. And it says adorable on it, which I thought perfectly fit this page. And I stuck it up there sort of as a free-flowing banner. And I just spelled out the word Aussie with these thickers. I think they're the elf font. And they're this gray with a white polka dot on them. And they're some of my favorites. I have six packs of them all shoved in one container. And I just pull them out, and I seriously love them. They're incredible. I use them all the time. I just like the color gray. Glue them down at the bottom there. Just like that, and then, I don't know what I'm going to do, I grab my box of embellishments and I just start placing things, so I grab a couple wood veneers from Studio Calico and a camera's hearts, and I think I even grab a couple of arrows. That's a little Maya Road velvet flower in gray, 
And those are little Meyer Road chipboard hexagons. And I just, I want to add some sort of funky shapes in here. And I like the way it's building off the page. And I add them in all three areas of that photo that you see. I actually cut one of them and it made two little embellishments. And then I use a couple arrows to guide your eye across the page or around the page more like. And then I start adhering down my little wood embellishments and those little asterisks are from that elf font that I showed you guys. So I just use the little symbols from the fonts as well as little miniature embellishments. And I'm going to glue down the Maya Road chipboard pieces and that little Heidi Swap um, banner. That's a little piece of a paper doily that I'm just going to add over there as an additional layer. And then I grab this little flare piece from Buttons and Badges on Etsy. Um, and I actually decide to just glue it directly over the top of that uh, wood veneer camera that I had there before. I liked that one. It added a little pop of color and a sort of a new texture with the shiny element that it had. And I add a few cabochons that are just, those are just from um, my stash, random collected stuff. Then I decided I'm going to do a little bit of sewing, so I actually grab some embroidery floss, and I got a ton of embroidery floss at Michael's a while back, and I sort of use a soft yellow cream color, and I'm actually going to be sewing completely randomly. I'm sewing a little bit here, a little bit there, a couple stitches here, three or four stitches there, long stitches here, long stitches there. Like, I'm doing it completely random, but I'm going to go around the edge to define the edges of the fabric, since it's sort of really tonal with the... Um, blue on that whitewashed background, I decide that I'm going to add a little bit of sewing to break that up. And that's really the layout, you guys. It was super simple and easy after I got uh, the hang of what I was going to do with the background. And then um, I'm just sewing it down, and that's about all. So I hope you enjoyed this page. It's a little bit more of a dimensional page, and I think that if I was to do anything, I would actually add a bit more contrast because it's sort of... Um, just tone on tone, but I really love the outcome of the page, and I hope you guys enjoy. Don't forget to check out my blog at scrappyhappiness.com, and follow me on all of my social networks, all linked below. And lastly, don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe. You guys, um, subscribe above, and right there, I'm just adding a couple little pencil doodles in there. So have a great day, everyone, and I love you all. Bye!